It's the Last Stand Podcast. And here's your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is the Last Stand, the unfiltered straight talk from some of the biggest names in the sport. And we got one today. I'm Brian Custer. And our guest today, two division world champion, current WBO middleweight champion of the world. He was an Olympian. You may know him as Boo Boo, but he is none other than Demetrius Andre. Demetrius, welcome to The Last Stand. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. You know what I'm saying? It's been a little bit, but it's me again. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, listen, I've been trying to get you, but we finally got you. It's great to have you on, champ. Uh, listen, let's get right to it. April 17th, man, you're going to defend your title uh, against your mandatory uh, Liam Williams uh, from Wales. Uh, it will be your first fight in 14 months. Uh, he's been very active. What should we expect when you two get in the ring? You know, I mean, you're going to expect the same thing from me, man. You know, uh, solid game plan, strategy, you know, dominance, uh, you know, landing shots, angles, just an all-around performance. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go and give people what they've been missing, you know, the sweet science. Uh, he, he, he has, I'm talking about Williams. He has knocked out or stopped his last seven opponents. Um, what do you think of Liam as a fighter? I mean, listen, you know, he, that Liam Williams is not somebody that's on my radar, you know, just speaking facts, because at the end of the day, he's not an elite fighter, elite level guy that people like, you know, tune into. So, I mean, but for him to, you know, you know, I don't know, get whatever knockouts, that's cool. That's fine. You know, it happens. Um, and him to earn his spot to where he is and Mungia, who really was my number one guy to turn down to, uh, to fight me and he's number two now to him to say yes for the opportunity to fight Demetrius Aaron, kudos to him you know what I'm saying like congratulations man you made it you made it you know it's a it's a it's a damn pleasure when you get there but when you get there it's different when you're fighting the guy at the end of the day you know um Williams is not going to stop this train. He, you know, I, I expect him to bring a, a, a fight because this is his opportunity to make something of himself, his name. But at the end of the day, yo, you know, at the end of the day, you get to say I lost against Demetrius Andre. Now, he said, and I'm quoting Williams here. Yeah. Quote, Demetrius Andre is a weirdo. I'm going to punch lumps into him. What's your response? <laughs> That's just mad funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just <laughs> that's pretty funny that's a funny one why i uh, why oh why not? i'm telling you i put what if i touch him if i touch him oh like, isn't that funny like, like that's what they all say well the funny thing is it's like no when i touch you when i get to touch it and people fall and get hurt and people don't want to fight no more people stop running around the ring you know it's a big difference you know it's hard to hit me i can hit you <laughs> but yeah <laughs> that's a pretty cool quote uh well you know it, it, listen williams is trained by dom ingles uh you were quoted as calling him quote the drug king and uh i mean do you do you still believe that Listen, you know, at the end of the day, when I was going to fight Billy Joe Saunders back when I was supposed to fight him, did he get tested positive for taking steroids? The answer is yes. And who was working with him? Dominic Engel. Did Kel Brook get tested for steroids? Yes. Who was working him? Dominic Engel. I mean, the list goes on. And all of a sudden, he's knocking people out. And so at the end of the day, I'm not, you know, sitting there accusing him, Williams, because, you know, now... When I get in the ring with anybody, of course, VADA testing, the gold standard of drug testing is always on my side as far as like, I'll, I'll pay for my opponent, I'll pay for myself. And that's just what it is. I'm a clean fighter. I don't take any enhancement drugs to try to, you know, do more damage than I already do to these people because at the end of the day, they gotta go home to their family. Uh, this is a dangerous sport. There's no benefits, there's no insurance, there's no 401ks, there's nothing. You either get in there and put it all and that's it. So yeah, I was, I was, but I was going to ask you that. So why why fight him if, if you feel like, hey, look, this guy has had a history of, of fighters that have tested positive. Why would you fight Williams then? I mean, at the end of the day, as long as they show up clean, like, listen, I was going to fight Billy Joe Saunders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, show up clean. That's it. You know, at the end of the day, that's all I care about. Like, yeah, just because you had took it in the past doesn't mean you're going to benefit it in this fight here. 
You know, it ain't, it ain't gonna be, it ain't like a longevity um, drug. You know what I'm saying? You need to take it in due time and in the right time, you will get the, you know, the benefits of it. But yeah, nah, I mean, listen, you know, I'm not, I, it's, it's, it's been around for years. I'm just not gonna be the one that's gonna step into the ring and have let somebody have that type of edge and not me. So at the end of the day, we're gonna fight clean, that's it. Yeah, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Billy Joe Saunders and last, last year you were quoted as saying, quote, I'm, I am willing to move up to 168 to fight Billy Joe Saunders in my next fight. That's what I'm looking to do, end quote. What, what happened there? Well, you know, smoke and mirror is on Billy Joe's side. You know, they, they, he went out there and said, hey, fight Demetrius. He didn't want to wait for Canelo until May. And pretty much they just used my name for leverage to get the deal, to make the deal. Meaning, you know, like, yo, Canelo, we didn't want this much money or we're going to go fight Demetrius Andrade. And we know you really don't want to fight Demetrius Andrade. And the possibilities of us losing is high fighting Demetrius Andrade. And you said you want to unify the belt. So here's your opportunity. <laughs> well, listen, in, in January of 2020, you signed that four fight deal with Matchroom and DAZN. Many thought that you were going to, you know, sign with the PBC. What went into your decision to, to, to go with DAZN as opposed to the PBC? I mean, you know, DAZN, I went with DAZN because, you know, there's young, there's fresh, there's the app stream. I, I, there's, there was Triple G going, like, that eventually went over there. But I, when I see HBO die down and, um, yeah, the options was PBC, top rank in the zone. Where were the middleweights going? You know, where, where, where was the rumors at? And the rumors was the zone. So me going to PBC, you know, who am I, who, who, what the other really big names over there in the middleweight divisions, who can I actually get in with? And now, yes, now you have, you have the child brothers, you have Caleb Plant, you have David Benavides. All right, cool. Yeah, they're definitely the um, elite guys. But over this side, you got the elite money makers. You got Canelo, you got Triple G, you got myself, you got Billy Joe Saunders now, you know what I'm saying? You got you got a variety of more, you know, elite guys that's going to bring in more money on top of it. So yeah, I went that way in as far as like fight deals. Mm. Uh, now listen, you know, you know, a fighter really only has, uh, a, let's say a finite time to be in their prime uh, to get these big time fights that you've, you've talked about to enhance uh, your legacy. You know, since you've been with the zone, it seems like though you're not getting the people that you know everyone wants to see you fight. The the Triple G uh, fight, Billy Joe Saunders, obviously Canelo. Do you feel like your prime is being wasted at some point? Man, I mean, listen, I, I've been, I, I'm I'm active. I'm being active. I was active when before Corona came. I was fighting four times, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I fought three times, four times within the year and a couple of months, 13, 14 months, four, four times. I mean, at the end of the day, I can only fight the people that's willing to get in the ring with me, something like Liam Williams, you know? Billy Joe Saunders wasn't willing to get into it with me. You got Charlo who the zone or bathroom Eddie Hearns offered $7 million to, which he turned down an old negotiation about more money or bringing it over to PBC because I can go over to PBC if that's what, what the situation is. And I know Eddie will, you know, um, sign off on that. So at the end of the day, it's like, do these guys want to get in the ring with me? It takes two to tangle. It can't just be me, you know? Of course, um, you know, the course you're gonna spend all this money on a fighter. Don't you want to put him in with the bigger guys and these other guys gotta, you know, say yes too. At the end of the day, it's a risk reward for everybody, you know, at the uh, and whoever wins will have the demand to fight the bigger and better or, you know, to get the bigger purse or the, the more elite guy or the pound for pound guy, whoever that is. So I, I was reading uh, a, a story uh, about you in boxing scene, and it, it and it says, uh, why doesn't uh, Andre fight the top competition? And then they pointed out to your last few opponents, the Keelers, uh, Suluski, uh, Afkafal. Uh, do they have a point? Uh, not really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they're sitting there and saying, oh, why is Demetrius fighting him? Who's fighting who? At the end of the day, where where are these where are these other imaginary people coming from that Charles fighting, that Billy Joe's fighting, that I'm fighting, who Caleb Plant's fighting? Like who 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 are any of us fighting? 
You know, the, 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 the thing is, right, when people say that, that's because they refer what I said about Canelo. You know, that's that's the only situation is Canelo, Canelo, Canelo. And what I was trying to state was that, listen, yes, Canelo's biggest stars that he fought, right? Sugar Shane Mosley, Miguel Cotto, right? And they were 40 years old on their way out, having fought, maybe fought one more time after that. They was done, not never in their prime. Kovalev, which wasn't anything that we knew of Kovalev back then. He fight, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are his, res that's his resume. It's a good resume. They're good names. But he did he fight them guys at their prime? And so they go back and they try to like, you know, really kill my situation. Like, oh, look, who Demetrius fight? Who Demetrius fight? Yo, I don't have a Miguel Cotto to fight right now. I don't have a Kovalev to fight right now. I don't have these guys. And these guys are probably wouldn't want to fight me anyway, because what? No, you fight Canelo. You go fight Canelo if Canelo wants to give you that opportunity because why? They had, they got Golden Boy, the Money Machine one, and it's a more popularity situation. It's not a, it's not that I'm not fighting undefeated guys. The guys you mentioned, so, so, some of them was undefeated. Um, one of them fought Billy Joe Saunders who gave Billy Joe Saunders a hard time. One of them fought Danny Jacobs and gave Danny Jacobs a hell of a hard time. And I made it look easy. Um, uh, uh, it's so like, I'm fighting real tough guys that have the opportunity to come on up and fight me. I'm not just fighting guys like they say and saying tomato cans are bum because nobody stepping in the ring is a tomato can or bum when they get in the ring. But I bet Williams is better than the last guy that Canelo fought. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The tougher guy than Canelo fought, you know? But at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, Rocky failed in. Like, at the end of the day, all I was trying to let people be aware is how you pound for pound are you not fighting the best guys today, all right? You fought Triple G at 37 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not fighting none of these guys at their prime. And that's all I was trying to state to people. So, yeah, they go back and be like, who did I fight? I can only fight the people that I'm coming up with. And, and do you see then, because as I was reading that article. Tell Andre they, Ward, tell Andre Ward, he wants to get back in. Well, let, let's fight. Is there some, <laughs> I can have a name under my belt. Get freaking uh, somebody. <laughs> you know Go, there's, we have that. In my generation right now, Canelo was able to secure those bouts because of Golden Boy and, and they were signed with them and all the other stuff. We don't have those guys right now. We have no former like superstar that's ready to get out the game like like I said Miguel Cotto Mose we don't have that so we gotta fight yeah. whoever's coming up you know what I'm saying yeah. that's it yeah because I was reading that 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 quote you said where you you talked about at the end of the day Canelo wants to be a unified champion by facing weaker opponents that's not a real legacy that's not a real champion that's not a champion with heart um you still believe that yeah because at the end of the day look look at the situation we're in okay you got you got um, franchise champion, right? When David Benavides had the belt, he lost. He made a mistake on him, right? He didn't make weight. So Canelo went, and now he found the easy route. He's like, oh, yeah. They're like, oh, oh, yeah, that guy? Oh, yeah, that's easy. I like that. Whoa, yeah. No and then and then he goes, he goes, I don't want to fight another Mexican country mate ever in my life. Like, <laughs> on, bro. You fought, you fought Chavez, right? For Chavez, you fight uh, Mexican if you need to, but why not fight David Benavides where he don't get he he shouldn't get that right. He shouldn't get paid if he's a stable mate of a Mexican. Why wouldn't you want to be like you know what? Let's do the Mexican war. We all like <laughs> go here. We want and pay this man and let him get. And if he beats me, he beats me. If he don't, he don't. Like so, okay, Charlo, Caleb Plant. Like when are these fights are going to happen? Demetrius Andre. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, Billy Joe. But we seen his last fight. He fought Martin Murray and went to 12 rounds and he looked like shit. I mean, listen, man, the, the proof is in the pudding. Do you think that even though you're there at the zone, do you think it's like almost like that? And I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to come off as sounding as if they sold you a bill of goods, but whether it's Canelo, whether it's Triple G, whether it's Billy Joe Saunders, you would think you would, they would, or Daniel Jacob, they would give you that fight by now. And it, it, and they keep moving it away. So for some reason, do you feel like you, at the end of the day, have you ever sat back and say, I don't really think they're going to give me these fights that 
that I've been looking for and that people want to see me in? I mean, listen, all I can do is continue to do my job and that's continue to win. And everybody got to get behind Demetrius Andre a little more if you want to see these fights happen. You know, it, 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 I don't have to necessarily have to be anybody on the zone. I can fight people on Showtime, PBC, top rank. We can make these fights happen one way or another. Either we're sending the offer, you guys come over here, or we'll go over there if you guys send the offer. I can do that. It's in my contract. I'm not sure he's talking about my contract, but I can go anywhere I, I please to go. Um, you've had a long. So what you're trying to say is also is Chalo is Chalo or anybody else? Do they want to fight me? Will they want to fight me? So if they say yes, if they come out and say yes instead of like oh, oh, oh lines only, I'm I'm the man, I'm the man, lines only. Instead of like being on that shit, do you really want to fight? Let's sign the dotted line. Let's make this shit happen. I can go to Showtime, no problem. Or they can come to the zone. So that's what it boils down to at the end of the day. Triple G maybe never happened. Canelo will probably never happen because they don't want to make it happen. They don't want it. And so if I'm if I'm on Showtime PBC and Chavo don't want to fight, it's not going to happen. So, you know, yeah, I'm stuck in a situation where I'm going to fight whoever's in front of me and may, may the opportunity come when it comes, I can fight one of these elite guys to show people, you know, what, what, what skills I have versus another elite guy. You, you know, you've had this, and you, you mentioned him, you've had this long standing feud with both of the Charlos. It goes way back really to you guys' amateur days. Um, I remember we had a fight at the Barclays and you guys had that kind of, you know, little back and forth verbal exchange then um in your opinion demetrius why haven't you fought one of the charlos um you know it's just timing you know it's just timing and again you know we both want to we both have to say yes that's it instead of you know you know, um, bickering, talking shit, whatever you want to call it. Instead of doing that all the time, like we definitely, like one of, like we have to say yes each other at the same time. Like let's make it happen. That's it. I mean, like I said, seven million dollars. They turned it down. I don't know if it's not enough money. Then say, what are you looking for? Well, how much money you want? What What are you looking for to make this fight happen? I mean, I don't know. Seven million is a lot of money. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But it sounds like a lot of money to me. So we had Jamal Charlo uh, on the last stand and uh, we asked him uh, about you. And so he, he, we asked him about uh, the reported offer that Eddie Hearn um, made the $7 million. He said it was cap, uh, that it was never uh, made to him. Uh, he said that uh, Demetrius Andre, when I fought J-Rock and knocked him out, Demetrius Andre was in the crowd and was scared. Uh, after the damage I did to J-Rock. And in fact, we had uh, a fight set up with Andre. He was supposed to fight my brother and he pulled out the week of the fight, which really upset us. That just shows you uh, what kind of guy he is. I would love uh, to fight Demetrius Andre. And in fact, what he said about you was, Bro, I would, I would blow his fucking mind with these straight right hands. And I promise you, he can't even last five, six rounds. Uh, what's your response to Jamal Charlo? Yeah. Oh, if I touch him. Oh, if I hit him. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, if I can put my hands on Demetrius' head, man, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yo, that's just mad funny. That's mad funny to me. Let's just make it happen. You know, at the end of the day, like I said, I, I, I don't... I, I'm not, I don't need to go back and forth with the shit talking. If you want to fight, bro, let's make the fight happen. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? That's just it. Let's just make the fight happen. I'm so scared why I pull up on you like, yo, when we going to fight? Yeah, J-Rock is nothing like me. You know what I'm saying? My hat goes off for him to, you know, for the opportunity. But shit, no, he can't fight like me. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole other fight, bro. It's cool. And if you can hit me with all these right hands and shit, sign the line, make your money, send me home, become the uh, unified the division, and then you say, yo, you be an un undefeated Olympian who's a champion, bro. Go ahead, do that. That's it. What are we, what are we talking about? And then as far as his, 
his brother's situation, like that's old. That's like really old. A lot of people know of the situation. You know, I can't get into it too much. You know, that's when, you know, the whole Rock Nation situation and this and that, and I was with whatever. It's old. There it was like, yeah, we're making, a, if you look at the numbers then versus now, I mean, I mean, come on, bro. We're talking hundreds versus millions. Like, I mean, what are you talking about, bro? Like, like I don't know. You tell me. Uh, you tell me. Yeah. You tell me, bro. I don't know. If it was up to you, Boo Boo, and you could name your next three fights, give me your next three fights. Guys who you said, if I could fight this guy, this guy, this guy, these will be my next three fights. Yeah, you know, I was um trying to put it and put it out there with Billy Joe Saunders, right? That's what I was looking to do. This is my thing with Billy Joe Saunders. After fighting Billy Joe Saunders, beating him, I would have went back down and said, Chalo, Triple G, do you want to unify the 160 division? If not, I'm going to stay here at 168 and see who's out, who wants to make something happen. So that, those would have been my, those would have been my fights. Those would have been my, like, things I would was trying to do. But, you know, it didn't happen that way. So now I got to figure out what's the next game plan. I got to beat Liam Williams. And then see what's next. Do I do I go up to 168 or do I try to make a unification bout at 160? Hopefully, one of these guys would really want to do it and say, Oh, I hit him with those right hands. Oh, he's so scared of me. Oh, I tell you over and over and over and over and over and over and <laughs> over and never wants to sign to do it. Like, come on, bro. If you can do it, then do it. You know what I mean? If my name was, if my name was, what's his name? Well, he looked like uh, Pee Wee Herman and um, Jack Sparrow, the last guys that Chalo for it was Citron. Who would look at Pee Wee? If I was be him, if I was him, he would be like, oh yeah, I'd sign right now for that. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Are you crazy? <laughs> Damn. Uh, let me ask you this: How long do you see Demetrius Andre at one sixty before moving up to one sixty eight? Listen, I'm, I'm uh, after this fight, I move up to 168 and fight somebody. You know, you know, I'm not. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, we don't get no younger. We can't stay skinny, slim forever. You know, we do put on weight and muscle and mass. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not. I'm a middleweight, and so for me, the middleweight is 154 to 168. I can never get back down to 154. But I ain't on 154, Chalo. 54, if you want to come on up, bro, we can make it happen. Don't sit there and be like, oh, I'll fight Demetrius, but it has to be at 154. Like, come on, bro. Come on up. We can you you you, you can fight for me. You can fight for my belt. I have a belt, and we worth your while. And you guys can we can make it happen. So I mean, listen, it's whatever, you know. Like um, one, thing, one thing, win, lose, draw, whatever the outcome is, I'm willing to get in there and show it. Uh, everybody who comes on uh, the, the the program, we allow people who watch to submit questions through social media. We got a number of them for you, Boo Boo. So let's get right to them. Uh, first one comes from Twitter. This one from Bassey. He says, do you feel like DAZN Matchroom is paying you a lot of money to keep you away from the other top middleweights on their platform? You know, <laughs> paying me a lot of money is... A good thing, <laughs> oh, you know. If that's what it takes, then that's what it is. And you know, at the end of the day, it's just prize fighting. Um, yes, I'm in it for like you know the the glory, of course, the legacy. But at the same time, you know, like I said before, there's no 401ks, there's no benefits or nothing. So I have to fight, and when I fight, I get paid. And if I don't fight, I don't get paid. So yes, getting paid a lot of money. And if that's keeping me away from them guys, hey, what can I say? Uh, next one from Twitter. It says, uh, you can move up and become the WBO mandatory to Billy Joe Saunders right now, or even become the WBO mandatory to Canelo if he beats Billy Joe. Why aren't you doing this? Um, well, I guess they don't really know too much about boxing, but I can just like, uh, you know, if I'm the WBO champion, I can just go and be like, hey, I want to, you know, go up there to the next weight class or the bottom weight class to fight for the same belt. So I could do that without having to, you know, if people think vacate. I don't have to do that. Uh, and if they paid attention, I tried to do that with Billy Joe and he said no. Hmm. Uh, this one from Dimitri from Twitter. 
He says, do you have any regrets about your career thus far? Nah, I'm tall, I'm black, I'm handsome. Um, my, my family's beautiful. We live in good and I'm active and everything's cool. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, no harm, no foul. I'm undefeated and I'm a champion. Uh, next one uh, from Twitter says, who would you rather face, Triple G or Canelo? Um, both of them. But um, if you had to pick one, of course, I'm going to have to go with the most popular guy. The, the one that everybody says is pound for pound is, is Canelo, of course. Yeah. Uh, another one. It says, do you think the various boxing organizations should do more to force the top boxers to fight each other and stop issuing new belts and create more of these champions? Um, you know, I, he, he, and that person may, may, might know a little something. Yeah, I mean, it, it started off with Canelo, the franchise champion, as we all know, you know, so he's being saved. So, uh, um, but, um, you know, the organization is one thing, but at the end of the day, the fighters can make the fight happen with or without belts. So, you know, organization is, 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 is a, a representation of being a world champion and that's it. So, you know. They can try, but they can't make it happen. This one from Twitter as well. It says, who is your favorite soccer team? <laughs> That's funny. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Cape Verdean guy. A lot of Cape Verdean people, um, you know, play for Portugal. You know, I like Porto, Lisbon. You know what I'm saying? I like them people out there, you know? <laughs> uh, this one from Twitter. It says, if you win against Williams, Who's your next opponent you want to fight? Billy Joe, Canelo, Charlo don't seem like they want to get in the ring with you. Um, you know, it all depends on, you know, their capability and timing. And if they get damaged, if they get hail man boxings, you can't really just, you know, it's all about timings. But um, either one of those guys would be great to get in the ring with. Okay. And uh, last one, it says, since Eddie Hearn isn't securing top fights, have you thought about moving to a new promoter or promoting yourself? Um, you, you know, I think no matter which way I go, I'm still going to be in the same boat. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, boo-boo. We've come to the last segment of this show. We call it the last stand. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Boo-boo, I want the first thing that comes to your mind. Not the second, not the third, the first. You ready, man? Yeah. All right. How long did it take before people stopped pronouncing your name as, or stopped pronouncing it as Andrade and started saying Andre? Uh, they still say that to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Charlo said it throughout the whole interview. He said Andrade. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it all depends what's your nationality or where you're from, I guess. Yeah, yes. My, my, my Latinos be like, Andrade, Andrade, Andrade. <laughs> you know, no, what can I say? Yeah. Oh, say no, it's me, baby. It's all good over here. <laughs> uh, who upsets you more, Jermel or Jamal Charlo? Uh, they they don't upset me. I I listen. I wish the best for them. They're black fighters. They they're doing things in the game. They're making you know money. They're taking care of their family. There's, they don't they don't. I'm not upset about their situation. But their crew, right? Their crew. The people that be around them that think they can fight too. They better watch it. That's all I got to say. It's one thing when the two fighters come. They interact and like, oh, yo, back up. You know what I'm saying? Make sure they did that. But if the other people. The other your entourage is trying to act tough and they're like people that like to pull out phones and shit. Let them keep pulling out the phones and tell them to keep their mouth shut before they get hurt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, chill, bro. I'll oh, fuck you okay. up, man. <laughs> uh, first thing that comes to your mind when I say Billy Joel Saunders. Um, he's a cheat. He's a liar. He's a disgrace. And I can't wait if I could possibly put my hands on him. I'll fuck him up, man. I'll <laughs> fuck him up. Um, who is the best fighter from that 2008 Olympic team? Gary Russell Jr., Deontay Wilder, or Demetrius Andre? Yeah, I'm going to have to say Demetrius Andre. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to say Demetrius Andre. <laughs> No, look, Gabby, you know Russell, we, 
Gabby Muscle, that boy can fight. Don't get yeah. it twisted. That boy yes. can fight. He got his. He got the shit. <laughs> God damn, I see him put in some work, you know? And Deontay, you know, his, his situation's a blessing. He, like, came along. He was, like, green. He didn't really know how to do things. He was, like, falling all over the place. His feet was getting tangled up. But he had the equalizer. And God damn, God damn, God damn. He used to put him down, you know? And then he that worked for him. He became, he got a medal. And over time, he, you know, straightened out the best he can and got as far as he got. But, yeah, Demetrius Andre, Gary Russell. All right. Last but not least, this is an important one. Who is... More Providence, Ed Cooley, head coach of the Providence Friars, born, raised in Providence, Demetrius Andre. Ed Cooley. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Cooley, I got nothing on you, brother. You know what I'm saying? Um, homage, homage to you, Ed Cooley. You know what I'm saying? When I see you, not, I see you, salute. <laughs> they, <laughs> <your> connections. <laughs> you know him as Boo Boo. He's WBO middleweight champion of the world, bro. I've been waiting for this for a long time. It's finally I tracked you down, Boo Boo. I tracked you down, <laughs> Demetrius Andrew. Hey, best of luck in that title defense. And as soon as you win it, uh, you got to come back. Yeah, for sure, definitely. You know, I, I love it. Thank you for you know having me and it's just um, being patient. And uh, yeah, shme again. <laughs> That's it. That is the champ, Demetrius Andre. Folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.